Well, this is a great way to start the morning. Big, beautiful, front living Montana just landing here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And it solves one of the biggest problems I think front living rooms have had for a long time. Normally, front living rooms have absolute crap for front pass-through storage. So this one elevated the rear bed bath area and it now has an absurd amount of outside storage capacity, which if you're going to be at a destination, if you're gonna pack heavy, if you're looking for that full-time RV experience, Montana, being both full-time warranted and the single best uh, selling RV to full-time RVers, I, I, I think you're going to like what you see here. Quick look at her all closed up before we get too far along. I suppose if you wanted to make a travel stop and take a nap on a couch or something, you could. You're not going to be able to get back to the bedroom and bathroom, but you are able to access the refrigerator with the slide closed, which is kind of handy. Front living room models like this are not traditionally known to be super duper travel friendly anyway. This is absolutely something intended for destination use almost exclusively. Now being a front living room model, it only feels appropriate to begin in the front living room. And one of the key things I think we need to point out here is the dual 15,000 dual whisper ducted air system on these Montanas. So you've got a 30,000 BTU air unit. Both of them are quiet cooled because in the location of both air conditioners on the front and rear aspects of the RV, that's where you have elevated either seating or sleeping areas. So it's most critical on this floor plan, more so than almost any other, that they're both quiet running. And thankfully, they get that done. You will find plenty of windows all around, not just your living room, but like on the, the, the door side of the kitchen, the, uh, the, the living room, the bedroom, just about everything. About the only area that isn't just canvassed by windows is the bathroom. Now what's also nice here, I mean you can see you've just got all sorts of space, but we have two things going on. We have a power up down TV, so you have the window when you want it or you have TV when you don't. And uh, our view currently is like if you were sitting at the theater seat, this is a direct facing no neck wrecker entertainment system. And while this RV is awesome for couples, it works well for families and guests as well. So a couple things while we're taking a look at these dual adult sized opposing height of beds. You can see how there are uh, little spaces between them where if you want to, you know, get out of bed, walk around them or walk between them, you can. You're not really just like stuck in here. Now you've got a uh, electric space heating fireplace, but our main air conditioner also has a 16,500 BTU uh, heat pump built into it. Now I mentioned that this is kind of, you know, decent for families. Historically, that's not something you would have said about front living rooms. But Montana did what Montana always does. They took it up a notch and they brought it to the next level and they gave true defined privacy to the front living, either guest sleeping or alternative bunkhouse. Like if you've got kids who are into their teens, they're probably not going to be camping with you much longer. Rather than getting a giant bunkhouse that you're not going to be happy with in two or three years when the kids stop camping, you could look at something like this that will serve your family for a couple years and probably serve them very well. And frankly, I don't think the kids would hate spending time in a beautiful luxury coach like this front living Montana. I know I wouldn't mind. But after they move on and they move out, you're not swapping out to a bunk model. You're just going back to a beautiful couple's rig. And as we head up the stairs here, you're going to be greeted by your central vacuum system, as well as, one of my favorite things, the electric dust pan. That is that little black rectangle. You can just toe kick it up, and it won't leave behind that little trail of dust when you're done with the dust pan. At least that always has, I don't know. I can never get the dust pan to finish the job. It always quits halfway through. Anyway, motion sense lighting. So if it is nighttime, you're not slipping and falling as you're coming up and down here. And I think my battery box is getting low because the lights just dimmed on me. So we'll get that swapped out. But as long as we're talking about lights up here in this fully walkable height upper deck. So your bed and your uh, bathroom have the exact same height as this. This is about six and a half foot tall. Pretty much the same height as your main slide out. So even if you're tall like me, you can fully comfortably navigate up here. All of the uh, cabinet doors and the slide fascia, all hardwood stuff, just got a very nice look and feel and the little dark accents they have on this lighter maple wood tone that they're using is something i think is very welcome you have day night uh two section roller shades on all of these windows as well power uh theater recliner with heat and massage 
and USB plugs built right into the uh, armrest there. So, you know, you can keep your phones charged up. Plus, the extra outlets up here, I have a feeling it's like it looks like, what would I do with that? I have a suspicion you will find something to do with it for sure. Now, there's not just crown molding accent lights. You've got overhead accent lighting all over the place. And it's on one switch. So if you want to turn this thing into what I call nighttime stealth mode, you very easily can. Now we are currently standing in a 3760 Montana. That is the 18 cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer. As compared to the 3761, which is an electric only residential fridge. Here's the thing. They're both 18 cubic feet. They both cost exactly the same, which is not how most manufacturers handle uh, their refrigerators in most brands. But the benefit to this one is it does give you that uh, auto changeover backup in case you do happen to lose power on something. Now I have to kind of bend my way around the corner here, but I do want to take an opportunity to open up all the storage as well as swap out my battery box so we can get some brighter lights for you. First of all, our master control panel over here. It is all encompassing and uh, what's kind of nice here, I'm a tech person. But there are definitely sometimes it's like I, I don't want to wait for a touch screen to boot up. I just want to walk over and I want to be able to turn the ceiling lights on or off. I want to switch. Well, Montana still does switches. Um, and now if you go legacy, well, then everything goes digital. So it's all just kind of a matter of what you prefer. Big wide open coffee bar right here. And if you notice in the upper left hand corner of it, there are some TV hookups. So if you want to have an upstairs downstairs TV situation, if you want to mount a TV on top of that open stand or about anything you want to do. I mean, it's really up to you, ladies and gentlemen. Below the coffee bar, we've got storage. And just below that coffee bar countertop there, you see that white strip. There is indirect accent lighting right there. Now, as I pivot around, we're going to go above the refrigerator. Big area ideal for things like baking sheets. And yes, you might need a one or two stepper to get to some of this stuff. But it's better than having no storage, isn't it? At least in my view. Now that's obviously a convec- well, maybe it's not obvious, but that is a convection microwave oven. That's what the red sticker indicates. You probably just can't read the print uh, on a tiny little screen. And down here, next to that pop-up power tower, that is a full wall splash, as well as a sealed burner stove, meaning you just don't have to disassemble half the thing. Now, under all, not just the coffee bar, but the island, this counter, it's all that indirect accent lighting. And that top drawer is a full extension drawer, like you see below it here. The RV is just simply parked, for whatever reason, the RV delivery driver left it uh, like 10 degrees off balanced axis. So it's it's just very much not level right now, but it's not hurting the coach whatsoever. Now over here, you're thinking, yeah, but where's my pantry? Right there, you've got a nice, tall, vertical pantry space, which kind of begs the question, what's behind door number one? And that would be a half bath. This is a bath and a half model. Uh, because it's a full rear bath, they figured you probably don't want people walking through your very personal private master bedroom to get there. Now they did a good job here, like even the half bath is stainless. You have all the same woodwork through the whole coach, the same fully framed out three inch doors, and then up here, another rain censoring max air vent fan, which means this RV has like three of those things. Now we're going to take a look at the dining situation, but first I wanted to finish off the island. You can see how Montana gives you both a farm sink as well as a little prep sink. And then wide open space below that sink. Good for all your, you know, dish soaps and whatnot. Plus, of course, a built-in slide open wastebasket. Now that countertop extension folds right there, remember, so you can get to the fridge in transit. Now I want to talk about something really cool here. I am hoping they start doing this across the board. You're looking... And you're going, dang nabbit! Why did they put carpet here? And the thing is, they didn't. That's not carpet. That is a vinyl type material. It is very similar to sort of the composition of like an indoor outdoor rug. What that means is that if you spill something on it, no big deal. You could, if you wanted to, I don't recommend it, you could actually hose that part of the floor off, although, again, for obvious reasons, I don't really recommend it. Now, while I'm taking a knee down here, Montana's dinette, just it just rocks. It just straight rocks. And one of my favorite aspects of it is the chair buddy. And I don't know if that's the official name for it, but that's what I call it here. And it makes it so that while you can, it does come with a buckle strap to keep those uh, chairs tied together, you don't have to use it. It just flips up with a gas strut when you're not using it. So 
most of the time, it is just a couple's rig. But if you are going to entertain some guests, it can very easily accommodate everybody. First of all, it includes a very nice set of folding guest chairs, and they can store right under the bed or in the closet or under the in the pass-through storage, or you can just leave them at home if you're not intending guests. And what's cool is there's still like a cushion bottom, a cushion back. It doesn't feel like someone's on a guest chair. It just feels like you brought a nice chair out for them. Now, if you're going to use it for like, uh, you know, phone charging or, or work purposes, you've got a pop-up power post there. There is also a set of household outlets hanging just around the side. And you're looking at this, you're saying, sure, four chairs, bud, but uh, <laughs> there ain't enough table space for all of us. The good news is that they thought of that. The table actually telescopes out and they redesigned all of this here so that you have like a full desk space and then you have another extension leaf that's kind of built right into all of it. So it, once again, the, the Montana dinette, like before we sold Montanas, people would come in all the time and say, yeah, have you seen the table in that Montana? And I was always like, yes, it's awesome. I know, but I don't sell Montana. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad we do now. <laughs> now I mentioned before, there's just tons of windows on the door side of this, and you can see just coverage galore over here, including that full window in the entry door, which does have its own privacy shade. So if you want to, you can pull all this down, but obviously you can also have some awesome visibility. Uh, you know, it looks absolutely cool if you're just coming downstairs in the morning from the master bed and bath upstairs. And as we come into the bedroom, we're greeted by just another big door side window, but also a magnet hold back door. So that door is not going to kind of swing and jounce around if you don't want it to. Now standing here from this direction, it looks very much like most Montana front bedrooms. Motion light in that closet. You saw that kick off, by the way. We build this with that optional 70 by 80 king bed to give you maximum sleeping space. And inside the closet is where you would still find your washer dryer hookups. Plenty of hanging storage in here, by the way. And the moment you slide the door in and reach in, bam, light kicks right on. Now I want to draw your attention to within the slide box itself. They have added a third window up top, and I love it. It makes this room look and feel so much bigger, brighter, lighter. That top window doesn't open for airflow, but it doesn't need to. Both side windows open for airflow. Also, look at what is just below those side windows. You have CPAP side stands built right into the slide box itself on both sides of the bed. That is not normal in the RV business. That takes extra time and effort, and they literally have to build the slide box differently to accommodate that feature. Now, directly across from us, of course, we've got a large dresser, and I like that sort of nightstand thing going on top of it. You might notice a household outlet there, but more storage space, that sort of vertical... I, in the kitchen, I call the pantry, but here you just call it like a vertical dresser, basically. And the TV being standard here is nice, but the fact that it's angle mounted down, so even if you lay in bed at night, you're enjoying a little bit of a no neck wrecker entertainment center. And did you notice you are not looking at uh, carpeting in this upper deck right here? And this full rear master bath, this is something. Got that seamless fiberglass one-piece shower, adjustable uh, height shower hardware there. There is a seat, uh, obviously, within the uh, shower itself. You might have noticed that as I was scrolling around. But very similar to the uh, dual sink arrangement you might find in the front bathroom or some of the expanded bathroom Montana's, like a 330RL. You're getting that dual sink here with a sealed edge counter, stainless undermount sinks, and... <laughs> Even more storage still. They just they just didn't let anything go to waste here. And there are drawers all the way down to the floor. Now with all the drawers and the cabinet door open, it looks a little cluttered, but when you're actually in it, that's not going to be an issue. And they didn't just leave that wide open. They threw shelves and all that to really maximize the effective space that you get out of it. And a big his and hers kind of vanity. So if you've got your own medications even, you've got your space. And like I said, three. Max Air fans with rain sensors on this layout. God bless, this is awesome. One of the things that uh, I also did here, you might have noticed as I walked around or you might notice now that I've mentioned it, I put all the landing gear down and uh, I tell you, that six point hydraulic system, not only does it move fast, but it feels like you are locked down on a concrete pad when you get all that down there. And can we also just take a second, I'm gonna pause here just to 
soak that the face of that thing in. That is a good looking rig. I love the symmetry of it. Uh, it's just it, it just has an awesome eye appeal. That automotive front windshield is a different glass from your sidewall window glass. A thing I often forget to talk about on Montana's though is one of the extra quality build aspects that they put into these. All Montana and high country sidewalls are all CNC routed so every little window cut, every little thing is uh, accurate within one thousandth of an inch. The tolerances that that gives us is just absolutely phenomenal. And I think that is one of several reasons why these things just really hold together very, very well. Now, uh, it's a 14,000 pound fifth wheel. They had to do something to help make it a little more comfortable getting there. And thankfully, the uh, Road Armor uh, ride and handling package they have here does a very good job. You've got that shock dampening pin box. You've got a, uh, a dual shock dampening suspension system with Road Armor. And uh, Mr. Halet himself, being uh, his last demo, was a Montana fifth wheel. He's constantly, still today, rants and raves about how nicely that thing handles. Now, you got two power awnings on this. And for each of those, you have one of these huge fans that fits right into that Dometic power channel. And that pushes a lot of air. So if you want to be outside on kind of a warm day, but you want to keep some breeze moving, if there's not a good, like if it's very still but very hot, you can always kind of force some hot air. Now, Montanas are and have been cold camp rated since 2005. That's just not a problem they have. They were one of the first major market brands to address that potential concern for people. So hot, cold climates doesn't matter. Montana's gonna get you through, whether it's the big AC, all the heat pumps, the 12 volt heated holding tanks on this enclosed underbelly that is both insulated uh, and has a radiant barrier and forced air heated. I mean, you're. it doesn't matter what it is. You're going to be fine. Plus. The little details of like including that handy sewer hose caddy so you can keep your black tank stuff away from your freshwater stuff. It's just, it's the touches that they do here that separate them. Now I've mentioned it a few times I think, but one of the hiccups and one of the reasons that we actually kind of gravitated away for a couple seasons from front living room fifth wheels is they just had a painful lack of outside storage. In Montana, being the leader that they are, the best selling, well, pretty much fifth wheel of any variety for about 17 straight years, and has been the uh, best selling full timer fifth wheel for a long, long time. Well, they, they kind of just rethought it. They reinvented the front living room, and they kind of combined a little bit of the concept from their, uh, you know, f like elevated rear den, and said, what if we just lift up that rear bed bath deck? What could we do with that? And the amount of storage this thing has at this point, it's almost obscene. It's almost like, I don't want to say like, it. <laughs> they went from not enough pasture storage to it, the question is, is this too much? And I don't believe you can have too much storage, but good gravy. I mean, it is loaded. Now those tail lights, you can see the uh, white sections on there. They have reverse travel lighting on this so that if you are using a spotter or a backup camera, you can see where you're going. We have both power awnings open, and that's one of the cool things here because there's that dining slide right in the middle of uh, one of your awnings. Now, there's still plenty of awning space sticking out, but they said we've also got this big blank canvas back here. Kind of like uh, the rear section of this actually reminds me of the Montana High Country sort of pseudo crossover toy hauler. And they, the, the way that the baggage doors and everything line up, they sort of combined, they said, what if we take the toy hauler out of the toy hauler? And they realized that they really had something there. And I think that's pretty much how this thing came about. Now you look around and like I said, I mean, I don't even know what you put in here. I, 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 I almost want to see someone try to fill it. I want to see the result of someone trying to fill all of this cargo space. Now notice, they really spent a lot of money on all the mechanical hardware stuff here. Like we have sealed hinges, metallic double paddle slam latches, uh, the double gas struts to keep everything open and easy access. They really went all out on this thing and like i said that middle slide now that they've added the second awning here it actually kind of acts like a like a privacy wall and it really kind of creates a dedicated this is my picnic table space back here and if i want to chat with you i'll move up front if i want to be left alone i'm going to stay back here and again all the windows open for airflow. And this thing just has, I, there's so much glass on the camp side of this. I don't care if you're in the bedroom, the hallway, the living room, you can always see what's going on on your campsite. Now, speaking of that door, 
It is a six and a half foot tall residential height door and it is 30 inches wide. This business, we talk a lot about 30 inch wide doors, but we don't seem to talk a lot about the uh, residential height doors like this one has. Now the uh, stable steps here, oop, I gotta open that screen door so I don't go breaking anything. Pardon me for that folks, I didn't set myself up properly. I think I was trying to keep the bugs out of here. But these are the zero G easy variety, the gas strut assisted ones. So as you can see, they are self-supporting and they're not going to, you know, fall down and hurt you, crush your dog, whatever. Now, this is kind of what I'm like, this is our normal front living room pass-through storage compartment. It's okay. You could say it's adequate, but again, this has so much in the way of rear cargo space. Uh, once again, the, the word that I think best applies to it is <laughs> obscene. It's just... It's obscene the total amount of outside cargo storage space that this thing has. And doesn't it look awesome all set up with those awnings open? Man, does it have some eye appeal. The biggest problem you're going to have with this one is people are going to want to knock on your doors and want to see inside uh, when you get to your campsite. And man, look at the mug on that thing. That is just good looking. Of course, there's that privacy shade in there. Just wanted to give you a quick peek up top here. They've gone back to a polar white uh, exterior roof skin, and that is going to dramatically reduce the heat that this RV will experience in the summertime, which I think is very important because once again, your bedroom, your living room, frequently accessed areas are up higher than they're normally in a fifth wheel. Uh, so, you know, you would feel that heat on your head more easily. As always, there you can see the uh, dual 15,000 BTU airs, and there is roof solar prep up there, and although I'm not too close to it, on an RV this size, you can very easily imagine how much area you have to use that roof solar prep. And that's kind of a reason why we carry all these crazy things here at Halo RV, because they all have neat aspects and they all do different things better than each other. Some are bigger, some are smaller, some are fancier, some are simpler. And that gives different benefits and different disadvantages all the way across. And that's why we try to shoot you straight here at Halo RV so you know what you're getting and why you're getting it. And, you know, we do everything else, whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery and everything in between. The only thing you won't find at Halo RV are hidden dealer fees. I guess we'll just have to leave those to someone else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.